coral is actually a small organism, a little jellyfish style animal that lives with a, with a relationship with the plant inside of it. Now that plant actually feeds the coral through photosynthesis, but it gives the coral the colour. Coral bleaching is when the environment gets stressful for the combination, that little uh, animal, jellyfish animal and the plants, and the coral animal actually kicks out the plant so it loses all its colour. And what we see is the underlying skeleton colour of the white, the limestone. And that's coral bleaching there. So what are the events that actually cause the coral bleaching? There's a variety of them that actually cause it. The main one and the most popular known for everyone is sea temperature, the rate of sea temperature change. But high UV is also another example that stresses out the coral and that little plant, the zooxanthellae, as well as fresh water. Right? And these three main uh, events, if they're not in balance with what the corals and the plants like, uh, the whole little relationship gets very, very stressed out and it breaks up for a short period. And that's when the actual plant starts to cause toxins in the jellyfish coral polyp animal and the coral actually kicks it out and loses all its colour. So we call it bleaching. It's as if we poured household bleach over a lovely, nice blue shirt. Coral is not dead once it's bleached. It's on Struggle Street. It's not entirely happy because it gets 90% of its food and its energy requirements from the plant that lives with it, but it's still surviving. The misinformation out there, corals actually need to bleach to survive in these stress events. When the environment gets unfavorable for them, the plant actually causes toxins, which they have to get rid of or else the coral will die. So if the coral doesn't bleach, it'll actually die. But it's a bit of a rock and a hard place because if you stay in the relationship, you will die. If you bleach, you will maybe die. But bleached coral is not dead coral. But they can survive nearly three months without that algae. When it's recovering, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a fact of um, you bleach and you non-bleach. The whole process is kind of in stages. So when it's recovering, you start seeing the color returning. Your corals get these beautiful fluorescent colors to them. And then it starts getting the natural colors. As time goes on, uh, you start getting the natural colors coming back in your beautiful autumns, your mustards, your olives, your browns. But as we're getting to that recovery, you go through this beautiful transition from bright white through all these shades of colors to then your natural, natural coral colors from there. It's actually quite a spectacular and beautiful scene to see it happening over a couple of weeks as the conditions improve. So last year, uh, we had a mass coral bleaching event which was um, gone through all the media. What we missed, witnessed off the reefs from Cairns and uh, northwards is around about 50% of live coral cover showed signs of bleaching. The media coverage of the bleaching event was rather alarming. It was a bit disturbing to begin with because they were highlighting that the reef is dead and that it, uh, there's nothing left of it and what is left of it, it's going to be gone. Right? Um, and it was a lot of misinterpretation of the stats that the scientists and the uh, surveyors were finding out of the situation. The big one that hit it was 93% of the reef was bleached. And when the real information was 93% of reefs that were surveyed showed signs of bleaching. And they surveyed that by an aerial survey traveling at about 180 knots at 350 feet. Now what you've got to understand, the Great Barrier Reef and coral reefs around the world bleach naturally. It's a natural process that they go through and most reefs bleach a little bit uh, every single year. Last year was what we call a mass bleaching event. So you saw about 50% of the live corals showing some signs or in some stage of coral bleaching. Some from completely bleached to some just showing little bits of tips of bleaching or little spots on it. And it was over a wider area than usual, so extending mainly in the, the far north reaches of the Great Barrier Reef. What made it different? We had the El Nino uh, last year uh, around the bleaching event. What's strange about it, El Nino is actually cooler sea conditions. So everyone's going, oh, the bleach because of the high sea temperatures. What actually happened with the, the calmer, more stable weather conditions that are associated with El Nino is we had a higher UV coming through, very little cloud cover. So corals and the little algae living with the coral polyps were getting stressed with that high UV. So the majority of the bleaching was happening in the top six meters and it impacted on a wider variety of species and it was for a longer period. So that's what made this slightly different to previous years. These mass bleaching events have been seen all around the world and it has actually occurred before on the Great Barrier Reef. One of the main ones that uh, stuck out to us was the one in 1998 that was also considered a mass bleaching event. 
If someone asks me, is the Barrier Reef dead? It's a, it's a tricky one to answer because people are very passionate about it. To be honest, my first answer, straight up, cold heart, no, the Great Barrier Reef is healthy. And people get taken aback by that to begin with because they say, oh, everything we hear is about its demise and its death. Right? Um, so no, the Great Barrier Reef is not dead. It is experiencing more and more pressures due to uh, climate change, which is a natural process, which we are exacerbating through our fossil fuels and coal and all that. But at the stage of it is now, the reef is still maintaining itself. We are seeing the trend towards a reef that is going to be under more and more pressures, but currently it is still in a good, good place. So the positive things that have happened after this mass coral bleaching event that have been extremely against what people are saying is an extremely good coral spawning event. Uh, they thought with the mass bleaching event the coral wouldn't do so well. This mass spawning event is showing that the coral is healthy and it's wanting to breed and reproduce. Plus we've also been seeing more and more sightings of manta rays, we've had sightings of whale sharks, a fantastic cuttlefish breeding season, triggerfish have been breeding. It's actually been a really strong uh, breeding season right after the, the coral reef bleaching event, showing that the ecosystem has rebounded and recovered extremely well, which is a sign that it is doing well. So we need to keep protecting it so it stays in that position, rather than thinking it's too late to come to the Great Barrier Reef.